All righty. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pause the screen here because I'll be taking notes. I don't want you to get too distracted. Okay. But okay. All right, let's go ahead and start. So welcome to the IELTS speaking exam. Could you start by giving me your full name, please? <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Malcolm Ma. Okay, great. And are you working now or are you a student? Uh, I work now. Okay. And where do you work? I'm working in a, a national travel agency and my daily job is operating tours and making arrangements for inbound and outbound tourists. I see. Do you like your job? Uh, pretty much, yes. It's my major and uh, I'm very keen on this kind of experience and I can communicate with colleagues from uh, 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 all over the world. Yes, is, is, is my favorite job. Do you get along well with your colleagues? Yes, we have a very relaxed atmosphere in, at the workplace. We eat together, uh, we go shopping, we see movies together. Yes, so I like my working atmosphere in Do the workplace. Do you plan to continue with your job in the future? Uh, I suppose so, at least in the next two or three years. Maybe I'll find some time to read a postgraduate degree, but I'm not sure. Okay. It's still in the air. Yeah. And I'd like to talk with you about birthdays. Do you enjoy your birthdays? Uh, actually, uh, I'm not really into celebrating my birthdays. You know, getting uh, a, a year older than before, so I'm kind of pessimistic about my age. Mm -hmm. I'm not really happy about celebrating it. And how do you usually celebrate your birthday? Uh, usually I would uh, go out and dine in a very fine establishment with my family members, or sometimes I simply buy a gift for myself. That's all. Okay. Which birthdays are considered most important in your, uh, in your country? Uh, I think it's got to be the 18th birthday because this marks you from uh, a teenager to an adult. You are fully responsible for what you're doing in your daily life. Mm. Okay. And next I'd like to talk to you about clothing. Are clothes important to you? Uh, yes, I think so, because I need to wear suit every day in my office. And uh, at weekends, I pretty like to wear a casual clothes, you know, hoodies and uh, shorts or not very formal pants. Hmm. Outfit, yeah, outfit, casual outfit. Where do you usually buy your clothes? It depends on, but most of the time I buy my clothes online or I find a colleague who is right on a business tour in other countries. I'll tell him or her what I like to buy. So they will buy them in the destination countries for me. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Do most people in your country follow fashion? Especially young people, I, I should say, because they like to follow, you know, YouTubers or trendsetters or influencers from Weibo or those social media networks. And they like to be keep up with a date with fashion. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So I think they like to keep trend. Okay. Keep up with the trend, yeah. Mm. All right, well, let's move on to the next part of your exam. Um, I'm going to show you a topic on the screen and I'm gonna okay. ask you to speak for one to two minutes about this topic. Okay. Before you start speaking, you'll have one minute to prepare some notes and ideas uh, before you speak, understand? Okay, yes. Okay, just give me one second here. Okay. Okay. Can you see the topic there on the screen? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. I'll go ahead and read it out loud. It says, describe okay. a useful skill you learned in a math class from your primary or high school. Okay. Say what the skill was, how you learned it, who taught you, and explain why it was useful to you. Mm -hmm. we'll have one minute to prepare, starting now. Okay. Mm-hmm.
Okay, you can go ahead and start speaking now. Okay, <clears throat> well, I'm going to talk about a very important skill I've learned in a math class in my primary school when I was uh, eight, seven or eight. It was uh, the timetable, you know. I admit that math is very uh, essential, is, is a very essential skill for our daily life. So I had this timetable lesson when I was the second grader, when I was eight. You know, I usually went to supermarket and did some shopping with my parents at weekends. And I record very vividly in that that was a summer day. I went there with my parents and as usual, we did some very good shopping. We bought some vegetables and daily necessities, you know. But when, I, when we had to check out and my father suddenly asked me to do all the calculations for what we've bought today, and I was very embarrassed, you know. I was just like seven or eight. I not very masterfully got the skill to do the calculating and the cashier loved me right in the face I was a very awkward moment so uh, I didn't do the job anyway and my parents didn't blame me for it but it planted the seed very early on in my heart and I decided to work my best to learn well in the math class until one day in the classroom we had this uh, timetable class our math teacher showed us how to do the calculation by using the timetables and uh, in my mind that's two was... minutes so i'm gonna have to stop you okay. there but um, okay. i do have some follow-up questions regarding this math topic uh, okay. first of all how can math teachers make math more interesting to students uh, for example um, math teachers or tutors can use somewhat uh, experiments in the classroom which would attract the attention of school-aged children because in their classroom maybe there's very rocky uh, rocky science for uh, for children aged seven or eight if the teachers can make it a bit of fun and to do some hand-on activities in math class i'm sure school children school children would love to do and to learn the math in the classroom were you interested in math as a child uh, actually i'm i'm a slow learner in school and i did least best i i i am not doing a very good job in math class uh, so and uh, i went to university and choose uh, management as my major just to avoid it just to avoid learning math i see okay and do you think uh, do you blame your teacher for that or do you think you just weren't interested in math um, uh, kind of who you are yes actually i've uh if you ask me i think it was my fault because uh, I'm, I'm very slow with figures and sometimes we uh, also miscalculate the figures uh, in, in when I'm doing some shopping or in the supermarket. So, uh, hopefully, thanks to the calculator or the advancement in technology, we have the calculator in our mobile phone so we can do the, do the figures very easily and uh, conveniently. Hmm. That's related to another topic that I have for you. Uh, with okay. the rise of computers, do you think learning math is becoming less useful? Uh, actually, it's quite opposite because I think computer science is totally... is a thing called binary system. So basically it, it works or deals with one and all. So those experts need to be very deft at doing figures. So their special knowledge or their uh, expertise 
directly connected with their knowledge in the math. Okay. So it's more like uh, the, the useful skills of math are kind of changing kind of from arithmetic to more advanced math? Uh, I totally agree. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, why do some people seem to find math very interesting? Uh, because our brains pro pro progress uh, accordingly to your uh, talent or I should say uh, natural abilities. For example, some people are very good at dealing with uh, a, a uh, d dealing with uh, 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 words and uh, literature, but or arts. But for other people, like you know those science scientists, they must have their way when dealing with figures, with physics and chemistry. So my answer is, the reasons are many fold. In, mm. in this field, yes. It's not a, a easy question to draw an answer or conclusion to it. Sure. And you talked kind of about that natural instinct. That natural instinct, do you think that comes from uh, more from your sort of DNA or, or something inside, or is that a result of one's environment? Uh, it's somewhat encrypted in your DNA, but uh, a nurture is a, a, a nurture is also important and how you how 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 do, uh, do you do with your academic studies and how your parents uh, foster your abilities to learn uh, subjects like this also play a very key role in developing your instinct or your ability in math performance Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, I, I lost you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go back to this topic of math teachers just for a moment. What are the okay. most important skills for a math teacher to be able to do their job effectively? Uh, first, uh, if you have to got a math degree, of course. And secondly, knowledge from textbook is, is far from what we need. Uh, in today's education because what we learn and what we need in society is kind of uh, dis, uh, dis, dis, disjunctioned. So what I'm trying to say is math teachers not only have to deal with their expertise, but also they need to learn pedagogy. I'm not sure it is the right word. I mean, the way or the approaches make people or pupils feel excited or interested in learning special subjects like math or maybe physics or chemistry, those very uh, complicated rock science uh, subjects. All right. Nice job. We're all done. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. So, how do how do you feel? How did it? How do you think it went? I'm I'm racking my brains to get <laughs> you know get those uh, answers out of my my brain. Sure, sure. You did, I thought you did a really good job actually, especially um, you know part one and part three are really your strong points. I think especially part three. Um, okay. You know, I think all of that uh, kind of background reading that you've done, you have a lot of background knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. And you've, I mean, one thing I would say is your vocabulary um, level is not a problem. Okay. Yeah, um, that's the first thing I noticed. Your vocabulary is really in that kind of 7.5 to even 8 kind of level. Um, mm -hmm. There are some slips and, and just a little bit of uh, kind of mixing up maybe two expressions and it comes out a little bit wrong. Um, so yes. you're going to look through some kind of individual mistakes. But okay. um, overall, I think... You know, I think a, a seven is definitely within your reach. Um, okay. Just maybe a couple things holding you back a little bit. So let's go through um, just the speaking notes to begin with. So here's from part one. Um, and here was the first example of just a slightly confused expression, but up in the air. Yes, um, yes. And then I would recommend uh, just kind of watching out for... Um, when you're talking about just present simple, usually often 
part one, we're dealing with your daily life. So mm -hmm. present simple is going to be important there. Um, try mm -hmm. to avoid adding these. I think this is a this is something that um, Chinese candidates tend to do a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And you sometimes hear it from a native speaker, but I would recommend just staying strictly in the present simple. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. This marks, you were close here. Um, I would say this marks your transition. Okay. Yeah, from a teenager to an adult. Um, at weekends, I, so pretty is good for an adjective. Pretty good, pretty bad, mm -hmm. pretty interesting. Uh, but for a verb, it doesn't quite work. Um, I think something like generally, mm -hmm. yeah, typically, usually, even. Yeah, something uh, more for uh, frequency. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. I wear casual. Now you change this to outfit. So outfit is countable. So uh, make sure you're adding the S there when it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Here, this expression is just, it depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it depends on, you need to have a noun after it since you have this preposition. Uh, okay. Yeah. But you're right, we often just say it depends. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Also this, this does, you know, if you're searching for what to say next, um, this answer of it depends really opens up um, an easy way for you to expand the topic because you can talk about the different conditions, mm -hmm. right? So when you say, oh, you know, where do you usually buy your clothes? Well, it mm -hmm. depends. Most of the time I have a friend pick them up for me when, I, when, I, when they travel abroad. But, mm -hmm. you know, for more basic items, I often shop online since the mm -hmm. size is not as important, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, part one, you know, you don't need that much expansion, but especially in part three, that can mm -hmm. be really useful. Mm -hmm. you notice yourself starting with depends. Now you have all this opportunity to explore the different conditions. Mm -hmm. And then, especially young people, I would say. I would say. Mm -hmm. And then keep up with uh, so, the... So, so, sorry to interrupt. No, uh, can no. I have a copy of this document? Oh, of course. Yeah. Okay. So I'm writing down all the things <laughs> you are putting now. So kind of busy catching you and writing my notes. <laughs> Sorry. No, sure. No problem. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you this and, and I'll send you a recording of this lesson too. So you can okay. um, go back and review. Okay. Um, let's see. Up to date. So keep up to date with fashion. Mm -hmm. um, um, you can say keep up with fashion. Keep up with. Okay. Yeah, that's that kind of mixing of maybe two expressions in your mind that uh, right. come out at the same time, actually. Mm -hmm. um, all right, now, uh, as far as the strategy for part one, I thought you were fine. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes people have a tendency to try to say too much so they don't get to their point early enough. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought you did a good job. Say your point directly first mm -hmm. and then extend a little bit. Um, yes. Yeah. All right, now in part two, um, part two is the one area where I think uh, a little bit of strategy um, would help. You, know, mm -hmm. you, you gave a lot of details about the um, experience yes. that you had, but you barely got to the um, actual skill that you learned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, part of my, it's actually in my strategy course that, that it's good to start with an experience to kind of put the topic into some context. Mm -hmm. um, but normally just maybe 20 seconds or so, mm -hmm. because you want the bulk of your answer to be focused on mm -hmm. this useful skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think maybe, I don't know if that comes from, maybe you're worried about, um, you know, running out of ideas. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things in the strategy course that we talk about is, you know, you've got the experience and then you give the details of the skill. And then there's a couple of other things you can talk about after the skill. If you feel like you still have a lot of time left, there's mm -hmm. some ways to move on um, once you're finished describing the skill. And maybe mm -hmm. that'll make you a little bit less worried about um, you know, having too much extra time. Mm -hmm. uh, so an important skill I learned, ah, I typed this one correctly, but you actually said, um, have learned mm -hmm. uh, and whenever you're giving a specific time 
you don't want to use present perfect. So just uh, the past there. Okay. And that's why, yeah, from your primary high school, often mm. the prompt will say a useful skill you have learned, but mm. since we have the time, mm. the grammar changes there. Okay. Um, just a strategy note here, I would shorten the introduction. Um, this is another way for you to get to the main point sooner. Um, mm -hmm. And it also is a way of kind of giving you a little bit more confidence. What happens often is that students will try to sort of paraphrase this prompt too directly, too specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually a pretty complex and difficult um, thing to do. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just spent one minute thinking about what you're going to say. And then often the first 15 seconds, you get tied up with this grammar. I want to tell you about a useful skill that uh, I mastered when I was a primary student. Mm -hmm. It's correct, but it, oh, it's such a struggle to get that sentence out. Mm -hmm. And that yes. kind of hurts your confidence and it affects your fluency for the rest of the, um, the, rest of the time. Plus, you know, in your mind, you've got kind of a plan of what you're going to talk about. If you get mm -hmm. stuck on the first sentence, suddenly your, your brain has totally forgotten about your plan, mm -hmm. right? And that's where you start scrambling a little bit and making mistakes that, that you probably wouldn't make normally. Mm -hmm. um, okay, this is a small thing, but um, some words like essential or unique, they can't mm -hmm. be qualified. Something mm -hmm. can't be like a little bit essential or very mm -hmm. essential. If it's mm -hmm. essential, it's essential. Mm -hmm. Very important is okay, but essential is already the maximum amount. Ah, uh, right. Let's see, when I was a second grader, um, instead of usually went, this is a good chance to use um, used to. Mm -hmm. I used to go to the supermarket. A mm -hmm. um, couple pronunciation things here. Uh, recall mm -hmm. um, that uh, aw sound, it sounded a little more o, oh, and mm -hmm. so when you first said it, I thought you said record. Okay. Um, so just check that vowel sound, recall. Recall. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, and then here, this usual, I didn't catch the z sound here. Um, you just kind of skipped past it a bit, so as usual. As usual. Mm -hmm. Okay, as usual. And when we, yeah, this is another pretty common grammar mistake in speaking, especially when you're starting with um, kind of a conjunction, when, mm -hmm. because, while, like that, make sure that you don't add a second conjunction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, ask me to do the calculations of what we bought mm -hmm. um, and laughed. This is close, right in my face. Mm -hmm. Okay, right in my face. Let's see, it was a very awkward moment. Uh, I think the word blame might be slightly off on this one. Um, I think a word like scold would okay. be better. Yeah, blame is when you're trying to figure out who, who made the mistake. Mm -hmm. If you're not sure who made the mistake, you might blame one person or blame another person. In this case, it's clear that you made the mistake, but your parents didn't scold or punish you for it. Uh, um, and then here, try my best. You can also say, work my hardest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see, I did worst in math class. Um, I think maybe a more natural way to say this would be, um, let's see, my worst, or actually math was my worst class or worst mm -hmm. subject. I went to university and uh, chose management as my major. Um, let's see, it's quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, here, I think, you maybe added like an F sound instead of a P sound. So I just checked that word adept. Mm, uh, 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 I think I said deft. Ah, yes. <laughs> deft. <laughs> uh, deft. Ah, deft. Ah. Oh. Okay. I see. Maybe I, I may have misheard that one actually. Yes. Um, yeah. 
And uh, so I think you're aware of this phrase, right? Nature versus yeah. nurture. Yes, yes. Mm. It's a reading passage, yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you're aware of that kind of set phrase like that, um, you know, obviously my question was kind of related to that issue, right? Mm -hmm. um, so one thing you can do is to kind of rephrase the question sort of and say, oh, okay, I think you're asking about that kind of question of nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. Because knowing that set phrase, that's mm -hmm. a, a kind of vocabulary point that you want to score there. So if you're mm -hmm. aware of the phrase, find a way to um, kind of say, oh, I think I see what you're asking me. You're asking me about nature versus nurture. Ah, uh, okay. Not a mistake, but just kind of a missed opportunity, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you have to get or have a math degree. Um, let's see, knowledge from a textbook. Um, you can also say textbook knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, and disjunctioned, um, disconnected would be good. Disconnected. Yeah, disjunction isn't quite isn't quite a word, it's almost a word, but not quite. Okay. Mm. Disconnected. Mm. All right, cool. So that's all of the kind of uh, individual little mistakes there. Um, did you have any questions about any of these? Uh, uh, no. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah, you can always ask me later too once you look okay. through the file if you have any. Okay. But yeah, I think for the most part, I think your, knowledge of the grammar is really strong and your knowledge of the vocabulary is really strong. Um, you might just need a little bit of help pointing out um, where you're slipping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, some of that you can do on your own a bit. Um, mm -hmm. So one thing that I always have my kind of one-to-one -one students do is, mm -hmm. you know, every time you're practicing speaking, um, record yourself mm -hmm. and then listen to it afterwards. Mm -hmm because you'll notice some of the mistakes that you're making. And if you make a list of those, you can target those slips. Um, mm -hmm. At your level, um, the, the process of, of improving actually changes a little bit. You know, to get to this level, it was a lot of learning, mm -hmm. right? Learning new vocabulary, learning new grammar, um, you know, improving your reading skills, improving your listening skills. Um, getting from kind of your level up higher, it's actually more of a training approach. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I like to think about, let's see, is there any, um, is there any sports that you like to play? Uh, uh, a badminton or jogging. Okay. All right. Badminton might be, might be a good example. Um, so, you know, when people, an amateur badminton player, right? Basically mm -hmm. plays a lot of badminton. They play a lot of games, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. a, the difference between an amateur and a professional, if you want to get up to that next level, mm -hmm. there's a, a training that you have to do where you're mm -hmm. basically hitting the same shot again and again and again and again. It's kind of mm -hmm. working on your uh, muscle memory a little bit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is mental, right? It's not so much your body. It's actually getting your mind to follow the same process, to force your body to do the same thing again and again. Um, getting to be like a you know, professional English speaker is a lot of the same process. So right now you're like a, a really high level amateur speaker. Um, to get mm -hmm. to that professional level, it's about finding the spots that you are making mistakes and repeating, mm -hmm. repeating those patterns, those clauses, those phrases again and again and again, training mm -hmm. your brain to make mm -hmm. your body do the right thing every time, mm -hmm. right? And you're still gonna make some mistakes, you know, professionals make mistakes, native speakers make mistakes. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's kind of the, the stage of learning that you're at now um, and the process you need to follow to, to move on.